In this Ready, Set, Go homework, we are looking at quadratic functions. We see projectile motion question in the Ready that models the path of a projectile flying through the air. Given an equation in the form f of t equals negative at squared plus bt plus c, our a is equivalent to our gravity constant, or negative 16 feet per second squared, or negative 4.9 meters per second squared. Our b value is our initial velocity, and our c value is our initial height in feet or meters. We are given a quadratic function, f of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 25 t plus 4, and we are modeling the path of a baseball t seconds after it has been hit into the air. We are asked to use technology such as a calculator or desmos.com to assist us in creating a graph and table for this function. Our gravity fun constant in this case is negative 16. Our initial velocity is 25, and our initial height is 4. We can see on the graph that 4 is the y-intercept or the initial height. That is the height that the baseball was hit off the ground. When the equation is graphed, we can see that the domain, which is all of our x values, is 0 to 1.709, or we can write that as an inequality, 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1.709. We are also asked to find the range. The range of the function is all of the y values. We can see on this graph that our lowest y value is 0, and our highest y value is 13.766. If we write that in inequality form, we will get 0 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 13.766. We are then asked to describe the rate of change. We can see that the rate of change is not constant. This is not a linear function. We can see that the rate of change is increasing and decreasing. We are asked to find when the ball will reach its maximum height. Since x represents the time, or t, and y represents the height of the ball, h of t, in feet, we know that the maximum height is the y value, or 13.766 feet, which is here. When will the ball hit the ground? We know that the y value must be 0, for the ball to be hitting the ground. Therefore, the ball will hit the ground after 1.709 seconds. In the set, we have a function in context, which means a word problem. The question states the relationship between the height of the person above sea level in feet and the distance a person can see to the horizon in miles can be modeled by this graph. Let's look at our units. X here represents the height measured in feet above sea level, and the Y value is the distance a person can see to the horizon in miles. This function type is a square root function. There are a few key things about this graph that tells, tell us that this is a square root function. One of those things is the domain. The domain here is greater than or equal to zero. Also, the rate of change here is increasing at a decreasing rate, which indicates to us that it is a square root function. We are then asked which one of these equations best represents this graph. One way to do this would be to pull up a table of values from the graph and substitute these values into each equation. The only function that would be true given x values of 0, 6, and 24 would be y equals the square root of 1.5x. Then we are asked if a person's eye level is 5 feet above sea level and they are standing on the beach on a clear day, how far can they see on the horizon? 
Our feet above sea level is our x value. So we will plug 5 into our function for x, and we find that a person can see 2.7 miles. In the Go section, we are asked to solve quadratic inequalities. This inequality already has a zero on one side, so we don't need to rewrite it. We want to find the roots of the quadratic expression on the left side. We factored this expression into 2x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 4. So 2x plus 1 equals 0 and x plus 4 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 1 half and x equals negative 4. Using these roots, we can graph our quadratic function. We know that the line of symmetry will be between the two roots and that the vertex will be along that line. Once we have graphed our quadratic function, we want to find the solution such that the function value is greater than or equal to zero. We know that the function is equal to zero when x equals negative one-half and when x equals negative four. We can also see in the graph that wherever the graph is above the x-axis, the function value is greater than zero. This happens when x is less than negative four and greater than negative one-half. We can show these solutions on the graph by drawing a ray to the left of negative four and a ray pointing to the right of negative one-half. This shows that the solutions include the x values less than negative four and greater than negative one-half. Because negative four and one-half are also solutions, we include these points by using them as the endpoints of the rays. We write the solution as x is less than or equal to negative four or x is greater than or equal to negative one-half. Here is another example. We will start by rewriting the inequality so that there is a zero on one side of the equal sign. So we now have x squared minus 8x plus 15 is less than zero. We want to solve for x and we can do this by factoring x squared minus ax plus 15 equals zero. We can factor this into x minus three times the quantity x minus five equals zero. We can use these roots to help us graph the quadratic function. Now we just need to determine the solutions. We know that x equals three and x equals five. So we can rewrite this as three is less than x, which is less than five. Notice that we don't want to include three and five in our solutions because at these x values, the function equals zero and is not less than zero. We indicate this difference by using open circles at the end of our line segment instead of closed circles. We write the solution as x is between three and five. Remember that less than or equal to and greater than or equal to include the points whereas less than or greater than do not. In the second part of the go, we are asked to graph all the solutions to the quadratic inequality. Y is less than or equal to negative x squared plus three x plus five. In step one, we should find the vertex using technology or by completing the square. If we complete the square, we should get negative x minus 3 half squared plus 29 fourths equals zero. That means that the vertex is equal to 3 halves comma 29 fourths or 1.5 comma 7.25. Step two, we should find the x-intercepts using technology by solving the quadratic equation in step one or by using the quadratic formula we find that the x-intercepts are negative 1.193 comma 4.193. We are asked to graph all of the solutions to the quadratic inequality. To find all possible solutions, 
test each region using a point to see where to shade all solutions. If I test the point 5 comma 0 and I plug that into my quadratic inequality, I see that I get 0 is less than or equal to negative 5, but that is not true. I will test the point 0, 0. When I plug in 0, 0 into my quadratic inequality, 0 is less than or equal to 5, so yes, that is true. This tells me that I need to shade below my quadratic inequality. Since the point 0, 0 satisfies the given quadratic inequality, that means all points under the parabola will satisfy the inequality, so we shade under the parabola. For systems of quadratic inequalities, you will follow the same process, but you will graph both functions and find where their shaded regions overlap, and that will be where all possible solutions to both inequalities fall.